What is my hammock tarp setup? What's up backpackers? I'm Dan and welcome back to Backpacking Adventures where we talk about everything backpacking, hiking and gear. And if those interest you, consider subscribing, but make sure you hit that bell notification so you don't miss a thing. I've been hammock camping now for a few years and I've gone on a lot of trips where I've used my hammock and I've made lots of videos on it, but I've never made any videos on my actual hammock setup in any kind of detail. So I decided to make a couple videos going over my entire hammock setup. And in today's video, I'm gonna go over my tarp with all of my modifications I made to it. And in another video, I'm gonna go over my hammock and my quilt system. If you're new to hammock camping, you're gonna quick realize that a hammock setup with the tarps and the hammocks and everything that goes with it is pretty much 100% customizable. And therefore it's very personalized between this person's setup and my setup and somebody else's setup. They're just never the same. There are many shapes, sizes, colors, and designs of tarps. Some with doors, some without. Then you have all different kinds of hardware that you can use, or maybe you don't want to use any hardware and just tie knots. And on and on and on. Actually, I don't think I've seen two identical tarp setups. So this is my setup, and there are so many different ways to do it, but this is how I choose to do it. Now the tarp I've been using is the Palace Tarp from Hammock Gear. This has a 12 foot ridge line, and it is about 10 feet, four inches wide at its widest point, which would be the corners. This is made from 0.5 Dyneema in the drab green color. Now out of the box, it weighs 9.9 .9 ounces. That's without any of the guy lines, any hardware or any ridge lines. Mine weighs 13 ounces even, and that includes the mesh sleeve that I store it in, which I'll go over a little bit later, the stuff sack, all the hardware, the shock cord and everything, minus the guy lines because I keep them attached to my stake. Also, one thing to point out is the ridge line is not sewn. It's one continuous piece. So there will never be any leaking from the ridge line. So you'll never need to tape seal it or seam seal it in the future. So this has two ridge line pullouts, of course, one on each end. It has four side pullouts. I'll go over this in a little bit. And it has 10 tie outs around the perimeter of the tarp. I chose to have the D-rings instead of line locks on all my perimeter tie outs. And the ones that they provide are a half inch diameter. And on the ridge lines, the D-rings are three quarter inch diameter. And the D-rings, I like having that set up because it's more versatile for me so I can attach a bunch of different things and I just think um, that they're not gonna break. So now what's holding this up? Well, what I use is a continuous ridge line that I got from Dutchware. And basically what it is, is it is a continuous line that goes from tree to tree to where your hammock then connects to either with using knots or some kind of hardware. So now I use hardware because I am not a knot person. I probably only know a, a few different knots that I use. On one side of the ridge line, there's what's called a Dutch hook, which allows you just to simply put your line around the tree and just connect it with the hook. On the other side of the ridge line, there's something called a Dutchware wasp. And Basically, it's a piece of hardware that you can use just to quickly clamp and lock in your ridge line without having to tie a knot. Now, on the perimeter tie outs, I have a length of shock cord on there, which I attach the guy lines to. And what this does is it allows the tarp to have some give. So if you're in a high wind situation or a big storm, and if your setup is really taut, then you could risk tearing your tarp. So what this does, this allows it to have a little give and flap in the wind. Now to stake this out, I carry along six MSR Groundhog Mini stakes and I keep the line attached to the stakes. Number one, it's just easier for me to keep track of everything and when it's on, when your stake is just on the ground, especially in these leaves, it's easier to see the, the stake and plus I can use it to pull it out of the ground because I'm too lazy to bend over. And also this allows me to only connect the lines that I need. So if I don't need to use all six stakes, then I won't have the line dangling down on the areas where I'm not using the stakes. And also, I also carry with me about four lengths of about 15 feet of extra cordage that I can use to tie out each corner to a tree or something else so I don't have to use the stakes. Now to connect the lines to the shock cord on the tarp, I use what's called a Dutchware Fleaze, F-L-E-A-Z from Dutchware. This just allows me to quickly easily and easily just connect the line without having to tie a knot or make any kind of special loop. Then basically what you do is you just hold the stake, put the line in, and I pull it to where I have the right position, 
put in the steak, and then I just lock in the line, which is the exact same way I use on the wasp on the ridge line. It's very convenient and very easy. Now for the side pullout, I don't attach them to any kind of stakes or lines, although I could use my long length of line if I really wanted to. Basically what I've done was I have put on a short length of cord with a loop that's attached with a pressic knot. And basically what that means is I can slide the knot up and down the line however I want, but once you angle it, it stays tight. And what I do then is I use my trekking poles and I put one in each loop on each side and that provides a pull out without having to tie out and have all lines to trip over. And now you can see when you have the pull outs, it is very large in here. There is plenty of space and there's no way this is gonna touch and be up against your hammock. Now this tarp has doors, which are basically just another flap of the Dyneema, and they really work well to keep out any kind of wind or rain, and uh, in the winter time, it can kind of help keep some of the, the, the warmth in. Now, these doors overlap with each other, and you can either use a regular guy line and attach it to your, uh, your, one of your stakes, or what I did is I have a piece of shock cord and what I do is I also put a little mitten hook on the end of this and I already have one connected and I will just take this and I will connect it to the other side. And normally I would do this from the inside. So if it's raining, if it starts raining and I have to deploy the doors, I can easily do that without even having to get out of from under the tarp at all. How do I store these? Do I just let them flap around when I'm not using them? No. When you first buy this, you can choose to either have the tie outs where you can roll it this way. I didn't want that. So now what I do to close these doors is I take each one, each side, and I just simply just attach it to the same hook on the other side. And they just stay there. And you can keep these on the inside or on the outside of your tarp. I choose to always keep them on the inside because if it's raining, I don't wanna to have to get out of the tarp to disconnect these. And also this is wet and it could bring water into my hammock. So I like it this way so I can easily just disconnect these and then simply just reach over and shut the doors. It's that simple. Now I store my tarp in a mesh sleeve from hammock gear. This keeps everything contained and makes it easier to deploy. It also makes it easier when tearing it down or if it's expected to be a nice night and I don't want to have a tarp covering my view at night, I want to look at the stars, I will still deploy the tarp between two trees, but I'll leave it in the mesh. That way, if it does rain, I can easily just deploy it down. Well, that's it. That's my hammock tarp set up and all my mods to go with it. So let me know what you think and also tell me what your setup is in the comments below. Now, if you like this video, make sure you subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.